This short film is part of the story of Lanaise, the world's largest solo designed and built sailing catamaran. My name is Les Thompson and here I will explain the design and construction of the tubular steel masts of this vessel. The inspiration for these masts came largely from friends who had used them. They found them excellent, although hard to build because they used round pipe. For the verticals I used rectangular steel tube. The horizontals were variously rectangular and square. These shapes made them far easier to build and possibly they had less wind drag as well. I made the mass telescopic so as to get under bridges and power lines and by winding a winch the top section could be lifted up or down at will. The idea worked well enough, however the whole exercise was really a lot of effort for little gain and I later decided to fix the mast together. Fully extended, the mast reached 20 metres or 66 feet above the decks. We sailed Lanaise to Sydney with this rig and as masts they were a roaring success. Light and strong, they were easy to weld and very easy to climb. I decided then that Lanaise needed more sail area, meaning taller masts and the fitting of an upside down sail in that space high up between the masts. Back home I lengthened and unified the masts, then made and fitted what we called the rocket because of its shape. It had a trolley to attach the topsail rope to. Now I had my topsail beautifully filling in that space between the masts. The rocket made the topsail self-tacking and it was a handy place to sit with a superb view. Performing maintenance on the mast while at sea was often a worrying experience due to the considerable acceleration from the vessel's motion. Like many yachtsmen, I had my share of mast failures. This one was due to the cable pulling out of the clamps like these on this backstay. They weren't tight enough and the failure bent both mast uppers where they emerged from the lower parts. Spiral cable end fittings like these are okay for static loads, but at sea with variable loads they fatigued and one failed when far from land. The mizzen mast bent in the middle and the whole lot dangled from the main mast. Getting it all down was difficult and somewhat dangerous. After the lower section of mast was down, then we freed the rocket from the masthead. Once free, it banged about as the boat rolled with the waves. At the sizes I needed, swages were impractical, so I used wound splices. These were safe and never failed, but they were very difficult to do. The wires were stiff and recalcitrant. They would fight you every inch of the way. I tried these types of end fittings because they were quick, easy and cheap but they proved unreliable and I paid the price. Unprotected steel needs both water and air to rust. After grinding through some rust as here, I wet part of it and it was rusting within five minutes. However, you can't paint the inside of tubes, so I was extremely careful to seal them to keep out both air and water. Thus, if you drill a small hole before welding the tubes together, all tubes can be pressurised if a tyre valve is soldered in somewhere. If it maintains pressure, there'll be no internal rusting. Lanaise proved to be a very successful boat and tubular steel masts played a big part in that success. I hope you've enjoyed this short film. More information can be found by searching for Lanaise on the internet.